Tunisia, Tahrir Square, Barcelona, Athens, Wisconsin, Wall Street. You can almost smell the jasmine floating up Broadway. Or is that pepper spray? Wall Street started out as a chattel slave market. Now, to cover its bets, Wall Street is a home address of wage slavery. Either way, it's the perfect target for an occupation. Two weeks ago, Occupy Wall Street started with a couple of hundred of quixotic protesters. Now, thanks to three decades of middle class erosion and the dedication of the New York Police Department, it's a full on movement taking on America's corporate fetish. You gotta love the NYPD. Just over a decade ago, they were at their nadir when one of their finest violated a prisoner with a broken broomstick. Then a bunch of them ran into two burning towers, and suddenly they were propaganda icons. But by pepper spraying a group of kettled women, the NYPD escalated a little demo into a full-on revolt. Of course, it doesn't hurt that the Western world is a tinderbox right now. Anarchy in the UK was just a shot away. Just a shot away. Occupy Wall Street is also working because it's not a one-off. The poster for the action by Vancouver's ad busters said to bring a tent, and it wasn't a joke. Like Wisconsin, protest has to be sustained in order to crack the corporate media blackout. Like Egypt, it has to disrupt business as usual. By claiming space in Liberty Plaza, Occupy Wall Street set up a scenario reminiscent of Tahrir Square. And just like in Egypt and Tunisia, the actions of the police fuel the fire. Last Sunday, the NYPD enticed hundreds of protesters across the Brooklyn Bridge only to kettle and arrest them. This only increased the scope of the protests. Now, even the unions are signing on. Occupy Wall Street has put the lie to America's two-tier justice system. Teabaggers open carry their guns with impunity at their rallies. Wall Street occupiers are corralled and pepper sprayed for nothing but peaceful assembly. And unlike the Tea Party, Occupy Wall Street is real because it isn't bankrolled by the Koch brothers or even George Soros. This is a true grassroots uprising by a vanguard of the 99% ignored by corporate capitalism and their political lapdogs. Occupy Wall Street is an indictment of corporate greed and plutocratic government. The main demand is simple. Money should not warp or trump democracy. What a breathtakingly beautiful manifesto. Right now, the richest 400 people in the U.S. control more wealth than the poorest 150 million. When a purportedly democratic government actually serves the interests of 400 over those of 150 million because of wealth, it is, by definition, a plutocracy. As Tunisia's jasmine revolution torched the conflagration of the Arab Spring, the occupation spring eternal. Looks like another winter of discontent in America, but it's a little early to declare spring. But stay tuned for the occupations of Boston, LA, Bay Street, Canada. For Rabble TV, I'm Umberto da Silva, Narex Murphy.